Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it was another sleepless night for the women. It began on Thursday when the word spread rather quickly that Jesus had been arrested, taken before the Sanhedrin, and then to Pilate, then to Herod, then back to Pilate. I'm sure the women were up all night, worrying and wondering what was happening, what was going on. And then there was Friday, the horrific events that happened on Friday, the cross. And I'm sure they didn't get much sleep that night either. The little bit they did waking up in the middle of the night. Then they observed the Sabbath, and then it was Saturday evening, and they were anxious to go back to the tomb. They probably woke up many times during the night. Is it time yet? Is it time yet? These were the women who had seen it all. They had journeyed with Jesus from Galilee to Jerusalem. These were the women who were supporting the ministry of Jesus, even financially. These were the women who were watching and observing everything that Jesus did. They saw the miracles. They sat at his feet. They heard him teach. These were the women who were there on Friday. They stood at a distance and they saw everything that happened on the cross. They heard the words that Jesus spoke from the cross, Father, forgive them. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. They saw what happened and they heard those words, and I'm sure on that Friday night, that Saturday night when they tried to sleep, every time they woke up, the visions of what they saw on the cross replayed over and over again in their minds. Is this real? Did this really happen? They saw his lifeless body taken down from the cross and placed into a tomb. And a stone rolled away. And I'm sure that as they tried to sleep, they woke up and thought again and replayed that vision again over and over again. Jesus is dead. The tomb is sealed. And so they tried to sleep. Saturday night, and each time they woke up, is it time yet? Can we go yet? The text tells us that very early in the morning, I mean, the sun wasn't even up yet. It was just starting to show a little bit of light, and they were up, and they were going to head to the tomb. These were faithful women. These were women that were headed there to go to do a very good deed. But the women that went to the tomb that day, they did not believe Jesus' words about resurrection. They went with spices. They went with spices in order to finish taking care of the body of Jesus. They went to the tomb expecting to find the tomb closed, guards standing in front of it, and the dead body of Jesus inside. They went to the tomb expecting that they were going to need to have the guards move the stone away so that they could go in and do the final preparations for the body. But that's not the way they found things. They got there, there were no guards. The stone was rolled away and the tomb was wide open. And they walked inside and there was no body. The text tells us that they stood there wondering. And the Greek word for, that's used there for wondering means they stood there and they were perplexed. They were disturbingly surprised. It's not supposed to be this way. What's going on? Something's not right. This is not what we expected to find. And then two angels appear. And the angels say to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? 
why are you looking for the living among the dead? In that question, the angels are perplexed. What are you doing here? And then the angels say, don't you remember what he said to you? Don't you remember that he said he was going to Jerusalem, he would be crucified, and on the third day he would rise from the dead? And then verse 8 tells us, then they remembered what he said. Important words. The women stood there in the empty tomb, seeing the angels, and then they remembered what he said. He's alive. And when they remembered, then they believed. And they ran back to the disciples. And they get back to the disciples and they tell them what has happened. They tell them what they've seen. And the disciples, in their unbelief, they say, nonsense. That's what the text says. Your story doesn't make any sense at all. Peter runs to the tomb. He finds it as the women said. He looks inside, it's empty. And the text tells us he walks away wondering. He walks away perplexed. He walks away surprisingly disturbed. What does this mean? A few days there, their focus was so much on the death of Christ. So much on a dead body in a tomb. They'd forgotten what Jesus had said. They didn't remember who they were anymore as followers of Jesus Christ. They didn't remember anymore who He is. All they could think of and all they can see is a dead body. Well, the angels rolled away the stone, not to let Jesus out. No, as soon as Jesus rose from the dead, he was out. You know, he's the one who could instantly be in the room that was locked where the disciples were gathered together later that day. As soon as Jesus rose from the dead, he was out. The angels rolled the stone away so that they could see in. So they could see it was empty. So we can see that the tomb is empty. That Jesus is alive. That it's true. He rose from the dead. And, in, and the, so that they could see in and, and know for sure and certain death could not hold on to Him. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. And that changes everything. It changes everything. Because Jesus Christ has defeated sin once and for all. Jesus Christ defeated the power of death once and for all. Jesus Christ crushed Satan and took away all of his weapons once and for all. Jesus Christ is the victor and he is the one who gives us victory. And he is the one who has made an eternal covenant with us through his blood, an eternal relationship with him for all eternity so that we can say, just as Job did, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end He will stand upon the earth. And yet, after my flesh has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see the Lord. I will see Him myself with my own eyes. I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. Resurrection hope. Resurrection hope because Jesus is alive. Because He rose from the dead. But you know what? The hope that we have in Jesus Christ as being His people is not just for the distant future. It's not just someday I'm going to be in heaven. It's for each and every day of our lives right now. Because Jesus Christ desires to break into our lives all the time with resurrection, hope, and peace. Because don't we sometimes have times like the women? When you can't sleep at night? Something's weighing so heavy upon you? 
an event that has happened, something that's disturbing you, something you did, something somebody else did, and it eats upon you. You can't think of anything else. And that's all we focus on. And the more we focus on it, the more hopeless things seem. Because as much as we focus on it, it cannot bring us any peace. We have to remember. We have to remember what Jesus said. When the women remembered his words, all the visions of what they had been focused on left and what they started to focus on was what Jesus had said. Not just about the resurrection, but all the things that Jesus had said as they followed him from Galilee to Jerusalem. As they focused on the fact that Jesus said to them, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is the one who fulfills all the promises and gives hope. And the women left in that hope. And in the midst of the things that we go through, in the midst of the darkness of life, in the midst that the worst that can be thrown at us, the last thing Satan wants us to do is to remember the promises of God. The last thing Satan wants us to do is to gather together as the people of God and be strengthened through word and through song and through sacrament. Instead, what he wants us to do is to continue to focus on whatever the darkness is in our lives. But the message of today, the message of Easter, is Jesus Christ breaks into the darkness of our lives daily, and he wants us to take hold of his promises daily. We have a living hope because of Jesus Christ. Peter, who ran to the tomb, who stood there wondering, who wandered away perplexed, later remembered and believed and trusted, and he became a great encourager of Christians. Our memory verse for today Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Peter goes on to say after that, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed." Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Peter wrote this to Christians who were being thrown out of their homes, put into prison, and being put to death because of their faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You talk about sleepless nights. You talk about darkness, and Peter writes to encourage and give hope. The only place hope is, it's in Christ. It's in the fact that he's alive. It's in the fact that because of his death and his resurrection, we are a new people, a new creation, and we have a living hope. And so when we find ourselves in those dark times, we have to remember all of the promises of God. We have to remember who we are because of what He has done. We are children of God. We are heirs of the promise. 
We are people who are under his umbrella of protection, his umbrella of grace each and every day of our lives. We are people whom he dearly loves so much that he was willing to die for us. And he rose from the dead that we may have strength and have power. And he invites us to remember so that we may have covenant confidence. And he invites us to remember so that we may tell and proclaim and be his witnesses in the world as we are part of his kingdom and that we may live in that covenant courage to be bold in proclaiming the truth. Because he lives, I live. Because he lives, we live. And we have hope for each and every day of our lives. The women went to the tomb expecting to find a dead body. And their life was totally turned around because Jesus Christ was alive, risen from the dead. And this Jesus desires to be that hope, to be that peace, to be that strength, to be that comfort in all of the pain, all of the discomfort, all of the sorrow that life brings. He's our peace. He's our hope. And for that, we give praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in His great mercy has given us a new birth and a living hope for each and every day of our lives through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.